Hello friends, welcome to BISPtrainings.com. My name is Sumit. I welcome all of you to the video series of Dynamic CRM. In this post, I will be going to demonstrate you how to use portals to provide external user access to CRM data. As you know that Microsoft Dynamic CRM SDK provides a simplified way to connect to the CRM by using external sources, by using external application and access data with just a single service account. We have already done with WCF services in previous videos. In WCF services, we'll be going to create a separate DLL file and that DLL file we can share with users. But in this case, we are going to create a web portal and by using this service, user will be responsible for doing all the operations on behalf of all external audiences. The CRM SDK, which we are going to use in this video is it will provide the numerous ways to make this connection possible. But for simplicity, we will examine how to establish a connection between ASP.NET web application and CRM online. So in this example, I'm going to use ASP.NET. I'm going to connect ASP.NET web page with a CRM data, with a CRM application online. And I will be going to store the CR, I will be going to store the data into an entity of a CRM, of a dynamic CRM. So let's see how we are going to do this. So for this, the prerequisites are, we will, we will be requiring a dynamic CRM online connection, uh, online registration, first of all. Second, we should have a Visual Studio .NET with a latest framework and the SDK on our system. So the first of all, I'm going to start Visual Studio 2012 and I'm going to create a new blank web application. So yes. And let's create a new blank application for this. So I create a new blank application project. ASP.NET empty web application. Okay. So a blank project has been launched. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to launch. Uh, I'm going to set up a connection string between ASP.NET and dynamic CRM. That connection string will be going to define in web config file. So in this web config, I add a new tag name as connection string. And here I define add name is equal to CRM and you are connection string is equal to URL. We need to define URL username and password. So the URL will be the URL of our organization. So that's the bsp.crmdate.dynamics.com. That's the URL. Let me define the username. That's my username and password is equal to. That's all. That's the connection string we added. After this, we are going to create one helper class. So I create one helper class here. Right click, add class and, if, and I give a name as CRM helper class. CRM helper class dot CS add this and I made this class as a static class static helper class we need to add few references we need to add few references here so let's add the references one by one first of all add a reference with SDK so I look for the solution so for this I use manage NuGet package it's an online solution. So Microsoft.xrm.sdk. Hmm. 
install the SDK. Then I want XRM dot client. I install the client as well. And that's all. I use two references from here and the rest of the references I'm going to add from my local system. So browse, browse, sorry, not browse it. Go to assemblies framework and two of the libraries are system.data.service.client, system.data.service and system.runtime.serialization. And OK, so the references have been added. Then I add a library here using Microsoft.xrm.stk using Microsoft.xrm.client.services. And here I want to use one static function. So public static organization service get CRM service. That's the function name. And in this function, I created a new connection CRM connection. So we need a new CRM connection for this using Microsoft dot XRM so it would be using Microsoft dot XRM dot client then I define XRM connection CRM connection is equal to new CRM connection and the connection string the connection name which we define in web configuration that's the name is CRM and return new organization service CRM connection. So you can see the error has been resolved and let's test it by right click and clicking on build. So right click and, and you can see the project has been built successfully once succeeded zero fail. It means the references and the libraries have been added successfully. The next thing we'll be going to do is we'll be going to create one account class. So I create one new account class from uh, by going into add new and give a name as account dot CS and in this account class same thing using here no need to add any library because this will act like a model. So I create public GUID ID and get and set the properties. I create few more few more properties. I set few more properties for account name, email address, phone number, fax, address line one, state, city and zip code. And all these are fields available in which we will be going to get the data from the client from the user and store into an object into the into account object. So the account class has been created. Next is we'll be going to create. We'll be going to design one web form. So first of all, I save it and right click on web application. And add a new web form web form and I give a name as home page. First of all, I set this as a start page by right click and clicking on set a start page. Get to the design of this page and we are going to design this page now. Create new account form. And here I add a table first. So I add a table first. So let me add one HTML table instead of standard table. So I add one HTML table. HTML table. I customize this table as, de as desired. Delete column. And also, I'm going to set the properties for this table. Width is 100%. So I set this position and border position. I set this as auto. Okay. Close it. And now we can add it as our cell. And now I'm going to add the fields here. So let's add the fields. First, I want. Uh, account name. 
I'm going to design this web page very quickly. So you can see I have designed a form with few of the fields, account name, email ID, phone number, fax, address line one, city, zip, postal code, state, and the text fields are there and one button. And now I want when the user clicked on the button after submitting the data, the record will be stored into account and entity in CRM. So I double click on this and on button click. I'm going to write the code, but before that, let's add the reference to SDK Microsoft.xrm.sdk and then where CRM service is equal to CRM helper class dot get CRM service entity E underscore account is equal to new entity and the entity will be account entity and now I want to add the field so you can see I have bound bind the fields like e accounts dot attribute dot add name the name uh, this is called dynamic binding and the field the value which we are going to enter in account name it will be stored into the name from the value text box one dot text telephone one text box three telephone one is text box three that's the phone and fax let me move this side fax is text box four so let's have a look tax is text box uh, text box four address line one is text box five so address line one is text box five and so on respectively and finally once we bind all the fields binding is done a simple pass a command where account id is equal to crm service dot create e underscore account and we can write a message response response dot write record inserted successfully once we're done let's test it so for testing first of all save it and then we'll run this home page so i'll just run this home page in a browser so you can see the page is going to be load home page dot aspx the page has been loaded successfully with the fields and now we can input enter the details so let's have a look the record are how many records are there in account first of all so that we can check whether records are going to insert or not so you can see there are 10 sample records and let's insert a new record so i enter the data bisp solutions email id bisp at the rate gmail.com phone number one two four five something like this fax zero zero two zero three zero four zero address line one let's say city hyd zip something like this and state and click on submit so the process is going on and then first of all it will establish a connection with dynamic crm and then it will insert the record into account entity and once the record has been inserted successfully oh, sorry it will display one message here that the record inserted successfully so let's wait for this transaction to be done or operation to be completed so you can see i have got a message the message has been displayed here record inserted successfully let's go and check so i refresh my accounts the records and you see the record has been inserted bisp solution with the details which we have specified the phone number and the address one city the email is not coming because this email is for primary contact if we click on this we can look at the complete details So the record has been inserted with account name, phone number, email ID, fax, and if you look at the address, the address is there. That's the complete address, street one, city, province, and zip code. So that's how we can create a web portal, a CRM web portal for inserting the record into Dynamics.
that's all in this video if you have any queries you can write to us on www.bisptraining.com you can subscribe our youtube channel if you want to know more crm videos from me you can connect with us for a customized training on dynamic crm keep watching have a nice day goodbye